Family Theater presents Jeff Chandler and Colonel Francis Gabreski. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network in cooperation with Family Theater presents We Hold These Truths, starring Jeff Chandler. Colonel Francis Gabreski will be your host. Family theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives if we're to win peace for ourselves, peace for our families, and peace for the world. Family theater urges you to pray. Pray together as a family. And now to our drama, We Hold These Truths, starring Jeff Chandler. Many, many years ago, Macaulay, one of the poets of our Western civilization, wrote, And how can man die better than facing fearful odds for the ashes of his fathers and the temples of his gods? With that motive, Horatio defended the bridge across the Tiber in ancient Rome. With that motive, brave men determined to be free have died on a thousand battlefields of history. The ashes of his fathers and the temples of his gods. This nation, of course, is founded upon God, not upon gods. And the ashes of our fathers, the rock whence we were hewn, has for the natural man, the man of honor, the integrated man, a claim, even a parental claim, upon loyalty and love. We celebrate the birthdays of those we love. And the day after tomorrow will be the birthday of our country, our republic. Her 176th birthday, which is hardly past the teething stage in the life of a nation. She's as beautiful as ever, and as worthy, fundamentally, of our love. Yes, sir, this will be our 176th glorious fourth. Celebrated everywhere that Americans travel or fight or congregate, from Kansas to Korea. Cease fire! Yes, sir. Third section. Yes, sir. This is still Sergeant Rudolph. Okay. What are we stopping for, Sarge? There's more Reds over that hill. The battalion just says stand by. They're starting to give me a rest, that's what. Yeah. I'll bet it just wears out <laughs> your little arm pulling that lanyard. Boy, how do you can say Hey, that what's again? Wayne got there? What you got, Wayne? Don't you guys know what day it is? Well, it can't be Christmas. Sergeant Rudolph's nose ain't red. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's very funny. Yeah, that's that's the Fourth of July, man, which we celebrate in the United States. And uh, these are called firecrackers. Hey, look what he's got. Oh, man, a whole spring on. Hey, let's set them off. Hey, well, that's, that's the whole idea. you got to celebrate the Fourth. Somebody got a match? Yeah, yeah, here. Hey, and wait, wait, don't use a match. You blow your gold earned fingers off. Yeah, what if it explodes in your hand? You get a bad powder burn. Oh, here, use a cigarette. Oh, careful, Wayne. I knew a fellow once that you... All right, all right, now stand back, you guys. Be careful. Look out! Make a battery. Third section, Sergeant Rudolph. You want us on now, Sergeant? Oh, yes, sir. Uh, Roger. Uh, you know <laughs> All right, gang. Let's get to work. Oh, no, Sarge. Oh, right. well, there's Flanagan's mob opening up. I think the infantry's coming through. Okay, same range. Four, 100. Set. Ready. Ready on three. Fire. Yep, 
This day's been going on a long time, till it's got in our blood. And although we're not one race of people, believing as we always have in unity and diversity, we have got some customs, like Sunday dinner, sports, and the Thanksgiving turkey, the volunteer fire department band, and fireworks on the 4th. Breathes there a boy with soul so dead, who never to himself hath said, This darn thing may blow off my head. Elmer! Come right back up on this porch! Gee, Ma, just let me set off this cannon crack. Elmer! <laughs> the casualty list on the 4th used to be pretty bad. Though probably not as straight as the toll on our highways every holiday due to careless driving. But we do learn things as a nation. Today we believe in safer and saner forts. With our national sport, for example. Steve Ryan! Who says so? I say so. Yeah, if your sight was any better, it might be worth your while getting glasses. Funny fella. Play ball! Wait a minute, Mighty Mouse. How was that a strike? Number one, I didn't swing at it. Number two, it was below my knees. And number three... That's I... right, number three, and you're out. Go on, scram. Nah, you must have dough on this game. Look, one more crack like that, and you'll go to the showers. And, boy, you need a shower. Safe and sane. No violence, no casualties. While in almost every city, the Chamber of Commerce or Veterans Organizations arrange community fireworks... Don't cry, honey. It was just a pretty rocket. Maybe she shouldn't have brought her. Oh, why, sure. She's not as big, girl. You're not scared, are you, sweetheart? Huh? <laughs> sure not. It's the birthday of your country. Mine, too. Mine, too. Many things happened on many fourths. Eighty-seven years after the signing of the Declaration of Independence, our country is locked in a war between brothers. July 4th, 1863. It is the high watermark of the Confederacy. General Lee's invasion of the North is challenged at Gettysburg, Pennsylvania by a Union army under General George G. Meade. Unfurling our flag, the stars and bars. While the Union lines prepare to resist the most gallant charge in history. Kind of suspicious. They're ceasing fire with their artillery. Boy, they're probably just cooling the guns. I sure hope you fellas said your prayers. Fall in! Fall in the company! You'll have 15,000 men, counting support on the right by General Wilcox and on the left by General Pettigrew. Good luck, General Pickett. God bless you. Thank you, General Lee, sir. Fifteen thousand heroes in gray, prepared to assault a larger Union force and its ominously silent artillery, entrenched and in position on Cemetery Ridge. I told you they were just cooling their pieces. Here it starts. Well... It's the 4th of July. They couldn't pick a better day for shooting in camp. Here they come. And the ghosts, and there must be a million of them. You mean them field lasses? Ah, they're brave men marching to their deaths like they'd be going to a picnic. 
There's their first regiment. Can you make it out, Sergeant? Uh, it might be Louisiana outfit. No, their second wave. Right behind them. Spread out! Spread out more, you rebels! Spread out? Who's side on, Sergeant? I'm on the side of all brave men, Americans like ourselves. They've not been dented yet. Ah, uh-huh. ah, ah. the first of them. Oh, look at that. Look at how they close ranks and keep coming. Stepping right over the bodies of the others. How can they live through that? How can we live if they get up here? Look, look at that. Their whole front rank. Ah, uh, it's fast. God rest their souls. May God have mercy on them. All right, men. At 200 yards. Aim. Steady now. Steady now. You're not recruits on the Boston Common. Fire! The elements on the right and left flank of the charge fall back, but the center with General Pickett does not flinch, so a thousand have already fallen. At the double! Look at him come. I gum, now I know how my grandpa said he fell on top of Bunker Hill. Yes, but these are our own people. At 100 yards. Hey! Pickett's <laughs> remaining men sweep on. The pitiful few survivors even succeed in piercing the Union lines, only to fall exhausted. For the ashes of their fathers and the temples of their gods. Well, I reckon I'm your prisoner, Yank. And on the 4th of July, too. You mean to say you people know about the 4th of July? No, but... Why, you jug-headed, goat-whiskered Yank. Where do you all think revolution started? Massachusetts, naturally. Massachusetts? It was Virginia. It was Massachusetts, I ought to know. Why, you are crazy in the head. Why, I bet even foreigners know it was Virginia. Who ever heard of Virginia, I tell you, was Massachusetts. No prisoner, no prisoner. By golly, I think I'd better knock some history into your empty head. Oh, you had not a fight for one day, huh? Well, if I can't lick you, I'll go back to being a drummer. Boy. Come on. It was Massachusetts, Virginia. 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 Stop it. Now, the cemetery ridge. Yeah. Imagine fight. <coughs> and in the cemetery. And what do you say, Mr. Yankee Sergeant? I suppose you think General George Washington had come from Massachusetts. Ah, certainly not. That's ridiculous. Ah, sir, what did I uh, Massachusetts. Everybody knows that General George Washington was a Tipperary man. Now, get in your proper places like good boys. The fourth had been celebrated earlier in our history with parades. The setting off of brass cannon in village greens. And in some communities, more quietly. Joseph! Joseph, put by that drum and come inside. Your father's going to read the Declaration of Independence to the family. Yes, Mother. Consign it. And everywhere, by the ringing of bells... July 8, 1835. Four days after the 59th anniversary of the signing, John Marshall, Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, dies following a lifetime of honorable service to his country. It was then, and not earlier, that the Liberty Bell rung to announce his demise first showed the characteristic crack in its surface. Yet, before our freedom could be enjoyed, it had to be confirmed. Our infant republic, not without friends, yet beset by enemies, is challenged to show whether she will pay or fight. The Barbary pirates sweeping out from their fortified ports, Tunis, Tripoli, Algiers, exact a heavy tribute from the Mediterranean shipping. Merchant ships and even some smaller sloops of war are robbed and destroyed, and their crews made slaves. For 400 years, the nations of Europe had paid. Or taken the consequences. But the young United States objects to ransom and tribute. Commodore Stephen Decatur is sent to deal with the Corsairs. The early 
Leatherneck see the shores of Tripoli as an American squadron pushes back the Algiers pirate fleet. Wait, flag the shore! Wait, flag the shore, sir. Yes, it appears like they want to parley. Hold fire, Mr. Tyler. Have gunners and leads stand by. Aye, aye, sir. Enemy dory! White flag off! Well, aye. Straight off the port bow, sir. Mr. Tyler? Yes, sir. What do you make of the dory? There's a high ranking gig. I'd say an emissary from the Bay of Algiers. Shall I turn out a guard of honor, sir? Not at all. These people are not honest enemies. They're pirates. Stand by with the ladder. Lower away. Lower away. What does that costume signify? The one in the lead coming aboard now. It's pretty high, I'd say, sir. Grand Vizier's staff. Mm-hmm. My compliments to your commanding officer. I wish to see him. You're looking at him, Sonny. You are Captain Decatur? <laughs> but it's impossible. You are a uh, midshipman, so young. I'm old enough to hang you from the yardarm if you weren't protected by a white flag and by a civilized custom which you don't respect. What's your business? Please. My master... The Bay of Algiers wishes you to come to his palace uh, to discuss a settlement. If the Bay wants to talk to us, why doesn't he come aboard? Because he's old and sick and weighs 300 pounds of lard. All right. I'll go ashore. But, Captain, sir... You will come and discuss the settlement. No. I will come and tell your Bay to his face that his ships must be destroyed. All of them. By him or by my squadron by next Sunday. I'll tell him that the seas are free, that Americans do not pay tribute, that my government proposes to liberate all of his Christian captives at once. I shall also set an indemnity which he will pay, if he likes in gold, although true justice might prefer his neck. But please... Captain's boat, prepare to lower. Never mind, I'll go in the dory. But Captain Decatur, they get you ashore alone. Mr. Tyler, your guns are trained on the city. If I'm not back aboard, sir, in precisely one hour and 17 minutes, you will do for that city what the Lord did for Sodom and Gomorrah. Aye, aye, sir. All right, Sinbad. Conduct me to your master, the Bay of Algiers. And that, very permanently, was that. Forty years earlier, May 15th, 1776, the Confederate soldier may have been right in claiming his state as the birthplace of our independence, for on this date, at Williamsburg, the Virginia Convention adopts a resolution instructing its delegates to the Continental Congress to move for complete severance with the Crown. June 7th, 1776. In accordance with these instructions, Richard Henry Lee of Virginia makes the motion. Who seconds the motion? I second it, Mr. President. John Adams of Massachusetts. A committee of five is appointed to draw up a declaration. John Adams, Benjamin Franklin, Roger Sherman, Robert Livingston, and the chairman, Thomas Jefferson. No fewer than 47 alterations are made in Jefferson's original. On June 28th, the Committee of Five brings the draft to Congress. For a year and a half, we have been at war, gentlemen. Lexington and Concord have passed into history, and our fellow countrymen who have died require that we dedicate their blood to union and independence. Shall we then continue to nurture a legal fiction of allegiance to a power whose soldiery we are endeavoring to defeat? On July 2nd, the declaration is adopted. 
On July 4th, it is signed. Hear ye, hear ye, in Congress, July 4th, 1776, the unanimous declaration of the 13 United States of America. When, in the course of human events, it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with another, and to assume among the powers of the earth the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and of nature's God entitle them, a decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the causes which impel them to the separation. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the government that whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or to abolish it and to institute a new government, laying its foundation on such principles and organizing its powers in such form as to them shall seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness. Prudence indeed will dictate that governments long established should not be changed for light and transient causes. And accordingly, all experience has shown that mankind are more disposed to suffer while evils are sufferable than to right themselves by abolishing the forms to which they are accustomed. But when a long train of abuses and usurpations pursuing invariably the same object evinces a design to reduce them under absolute despotism, it is their right, it is their duty to throw off such government and to provide new guards for their future security. Such has been the patient sufferance of these colonies, and such is now the necessity which constrains them to alter their former system. Had the colonies lost the war, these signers to a man would have been executed, their property confiscated, their families ruined and their names disgraced. This they well knew, and yet... Bless my soul, Mr. Hancock, why have you signed your name in such giant letters? Precisely, sir, so the king won't need his eyeglasses to read it. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. We must hang together now, lest we all hang separately. <laughs> <laughs> now then, who signs for New Hampshire? Josiah Bartlett. William Whipple. Matthew Thornton. Who signs for Massachusetts? Samuel Adams, John Adams, Robert Treat Payne, Elbridge Gary. From Rhode Island? Step Hopkins, William Ellery. For Connecticut? Roger Sherman, Samuel Huntington, we William Williams, the representatives Oliver of the United Walker. States of America. In General Congress Assembly, appealing to the supreme judge of the world for the rectitude of our intentions, do in the name and by the authority of the good people of these colonies, solemnly publish and declare that these united colonies are, and of right ought to be, free and independent states, that they are absolved from all allegiance to the British crown, and that all political connection between them and the state of Great Britain is and ought to be totally dissolved. And that as free and independent states, they have full power to levy war, conclude peace, contract alliances, establish commerce, and to do all other acts and things which independent states may of right do. And for the support of this declaration, with a firm reliance on the protection of divine providence, we mutually pledge to each other our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor.
this time, Family Theater takes pleasure in presenting our host for this evening, America's leading jet combat pilot, distinguished ace of World War II, and with us after two years of duty in Korea as commander of the 51st Fighter Interceptor Wing, Colonel Francis S. Gabreski. This is Colonel Gabreski. I am extremely happy to be host this evening on Family Theater's program, especially this program, commemorating Independence Day for two reasons, both concerned with family prayer. First, as you know, July 4th this year has been designated by the President as a National Day of Prayer, and he has urged all Americans on that day to seek divine guidance. Second, I am glad of this opportunity to testify to the effectiveness of family prayer. I think I know something about that. And I have no hesitancy. In fact, I may have a duty to acknowledge that protection. Because it happens that I have never gotten in that cockpit without literally turning the ship over to him and have said every time, God, take over. I'm pretty sure he did. And I think I know why. The prayers of my family at home, praying as a family for the absent member. That is why I agree heartily with the message that Family Theater brings its listeners each week and endorse and recommend this program's great and very true slogan, a family that prays together stays together. Ladies and gentlemen, I ought to know. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. Hollywood Family Theater has brought you We Hold These Truths, starring Jeff Chandler. Colonel Francis Gabreski was your host. Others in the cast were Mae Clark, Ted DeCorsia, Howard Culver, Tom Holland, Robert Clark, Stan Waxman, Leo Clary, Cliff Clark, Lee Millar, and Roland Morris. The script was written by Fred Niblo, Jr., with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman and was directed for Family Theater by Joseph F. Mansfield. This series of Family Theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who feel the need for this type of program, by the mutual network which has responded to this need, and by the hundreds of stars of stage, screen, and radio who give so unselfishly of their time and talent to appear on our Family Theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. This is Tony Lofrano expressing the wish of Family Theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home. Family Theater will not be heard next week due to convention broadcasts. throughout the world and originates in the Hollywood studios of the world's largest network. Portions of tonight's program were transcribed. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.